It was a dare for the record books. Anyone who took it was declared clinically insane by their friends and would have to be carted away to the loony bin. But if anyone was insane that day, it was Thomas Swartz, also known as Tommy by his friends. He not only volunteered to do it, but he was going to do it alone. Standing in the driveway of the Nevisarian household, he stood confident, his eyes shifted from the window to the door, seeking weakness. If he was scared, he didn't show it. Ignoring the cheers of his accomplices, he advanced toward his opponent. The sounds of the lawnmower <laughs> hitched a ride with the breeze, engulfing the children as they held the position. The driveway found itself losing the war with the grass, and the boundaries where they were separated became unclear. Tommy didn't notice this. His mind was focused upon his goal, and what lay ahead. Cicadas argued with each other while the birds sang in the era of the summer. But this was all lost on Thomas, as the wood steps underneath his feet moaned with the effort that it took to support him. With no functioning doorbell, and no welcome meant to accommodate him, Tommy appeared into the screen door, who also had some complaining to do, and reached for the brass knob. As his thumb began pushing down on the lever, time held its breath in anticipation. His friends ceased their cheers and merely stood silent where it was safe, letting the sun extract sweat from their very pores. Even the birds and cicadas that paused their conversations just to study him. The door wailed as it allowed him entry, and again when the house had engulfed him. With the door in between him and his friends, he allowed fear to creep into his face. The path to being a schoolyard legend certainly isn't the easiest. Nothing had shamble shambled into sight, clanking of chains, though that didn't alleviate Thomas's fears. His goals resided in on the second story, and the faster he made it there, the less likely he would end up being killed by horrors unknown. With every fiber of his being resisting him, Thomas advanced through the house. The echo of each footfall seemed to resonate throughout the entire home and only served to add to his anxiety. Upon passing the foyer, White sheeted figures assaulted his vision, making him leap back. However, the Fernite did not attack, perhaps not hungry for small children. No, no, no. As his heart safely descended from its throat back to his chest, Thomas had reinforced his nerves and simply begun walking again. The stairs curved up at a sharp turn near the middle, and... A small groan issued from Thomas's uh, issued from Thomas as nightmare scenarios played out in his mind. The fact that this particular staircase was used in used as a bowling alley for severed heads did not exactly appeal to him either. No ghost could compare to the taunts and teases of his fellow colleagues, however. So, the staircase was the only minor nuisance. With each step, Thomas's muscles tightened further, trying in vain to prevent this inevitable move. His eyes focused as his head turned around a corner, his bowels bracing for release. But nothing came at him. Nothing upon erupted from the hallway, and nothing dis disemboweled him and gouged out his eyes or some ordinary things I'm pretty sure you whore junkies could think of. Thomas approached the far door on his right, his final destination. Thomas couldn't decide whether or not the doors in the hallway were being closed a was a blessing or a curse. Shifting, shifting horrors may lurk in the folds of the unknown, but since they didn't attack, it didn't bother him. Besides the anxiety and the spooking of himself. The goal was too close in sight to chicken out now. Thomas stretched his hand to the knob of the final room, and as he did, the knob began to shrink. Yet... The door yielded to him nonetheless, and he entered the room. The accursed painting was on to the wall to the very far left, beckoning for it to come closer. And 
as it had done to so many others. The painting didn't seem like one that would devour the sanity of many innocents, and in fact, it seemed rather innocent itself. No pentagrams, no monsters of any kind. The moon of one, inky eye, one winking eye was playful to Thomas, and a row of neat houses made him yearn for his own. No spade clawed hand bore into his flesh. No clanking change found their way to his soul. Thomas even forgot what he was supposed to frighten him about the house. As he turned to go, go, he saw a final look back at the painting and smiled. He was ready to rejoin his friends outside. Thomas Swartz was never found. The children had urged him to do it, and waited with all the patience they could muster, as the light deepened orange over the horizon. Eventually, each found their own paths to their own houses, while Thomas began to worry. None of them talked about what had occurred, not between themselves, not to the police, and when they were interrogated, they said nothing. When the house was demolished a year later, there was no painting, there was no winking moon, there was no... Nothing. And that is the story of Tom Swartz. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to my magical story. Well, not mine, but a story written by an anonymous user, I'm assuming. I cannot see any actual credit on here. So, yeah, if there is someone and you would actually like me to put your name on the video, I certainly will. This creepypasta is called a dare, and to be honest, I quite like it. I wish it would have a bit more description, however, the build-up was great. Even though there was a overuse of symbolism, it was great. Again, the only thing I wish there was, was more description. I had to, you know, kind of describe everything myself. You know, the only thing I could really go as a reference is my own house and the house from Monster House, and... <sighs> yeah. You have to use a little bit of your own imagination, but the idea that this kid went in here, found nothing, and then simply didn't come out? Quite freaky deaky. Especially considering the fact that we've probably all seen one of those creepy houses or creepy areas. Like for me, there's a woods outside my house, and I refuse to go in there because you go, you know, like the entrance is lit up, but like you go in there and it's pitch black, so kind of reminds me of that kind of feeling, you know. You know, like, I guess the best way this creep has to describe it is that feeling when you go out with your friends late at night. You know, you're walking around a neighborhood, maybe in the city, and everything's dark and dim, and, you know, you, you guys are just being jackasses, and, well, decide to do something creepy. And then you probably chicken out and run home. That's what it reminds me of, and to be honest, it, it being able to recapture that feeling is quite amazing. I also would like you guys to mention that my Patreon is currently at about 70 to, I mean like $85. I'm trying to get it up to about 500 so if you guys are interested in donating, please message me, and I would definitely freaking love to give you some sweet rewards and some sweet giveaways in the future once that happens. Hope you guys enjoyed, and yeah, have a good Magical Mythical Morning.